Good morning, Mr. Gilman. Carlos Latilla and Howie Greenberg, two left-wing terrorists in this small and politically unstable South American Republic of Banana, have abducted that country's military dictator, Grodino Ferrello, and are holding him hostage until their demands for liberty, equality, free elections, and freedom for all political prisoners are met. Although Ferrello is perhaps the most oppressive dictator in the Western Hemisphere, the Republic of Banana is the United States' prime supplier of automatic choke springs, an item necessary for the production of all automobiles. Without Ferrello's cooperation, the U.S. auto industry will collapse, thus paving the way for the destruction of the entire United States economy. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to rescue Ferrello and eliminate Lutil and Greenberg. You are advised to utilize logical positivism as your prime means of attack. Should you be caught or killed, the chairman of the Harvard Philosophy Department will rescind your doctoral thesis. Good luck, Mr. Gilman, as always. consequently our sign of liberty, property, and the pursuit of happiness. You see, Professor, we're convinced of our position. We bear witness to the truth. What is truth? What? All this talk of God is pure rubbish. For too long we've been locked into thinking in terms of morality that postulated the supreme being as the norm and judge of our actions. It's a medieval conception. God is all good and all powerful. Your way of thinking is from a pre-scientific age. Modern man doesn't look to God for his answers. He looks to scientific progress. We found, long ago, that the meaning of this world lies right here, within the world itself. You mean there's no God? What about morality if there's no God? Sure, there might be a God, but your primitive religious thinking is useless in a modern scientific age. All this metaphysical ethical talk is bogus. It doesn't mean anything anymore. Mankind will only make progress when he sheds these archaic conceptions about God and morality. You 
seem to be saying that we ought to separate law and morality totally. Isn't that a dangerous position? You see, the danger is to blow the law. Steak! Please! I'm hungry! A White Castle burger! Ignore him. He's a crybaby. Okay, the danger is to load the law up with all these terms like justice and freedom, which are just pregnant with emotional connotations. You mean justice and freedom are meaningless concepts? It's so ambiguous. What are you saying when you say this is justice is conveying your own personal emotional feelings in the matter and trying to convince others of it. It's the same as any ethical term. All they do is convey your own personal preferences. What have we been fighting for? It doesn't mean anything. There's no such thing as justice. A cause is worthless. Look at the havoc we've brought. The senseless destruction. Murder. Kidnapping. Overtime parking. And all for meaningless abstractions. There's only one way out. Convinced of the foolishness of seeking justice, the terrorists walked off to end their lives. Maybe it's all for the best. Most terrorists outlive their causes and then have to find real jobs in advertising or politics. Some even become dentists. The terrorists built their philosophy on a foundation of sand, a weak foundation that was washed away by the tidal wave of logical positivism. And as for me, my job is done. I use whatever philosophy I need that will serve my purposes. My mother wanted me to be a doctor, but I found early in life that philosophy is where the action is. <laughs>